Well, if you have a Bible, I would love for you to turn to the book of James, New Testament book of James. Uh, this is our third week in, and we've, we've just kind of been kind of going along really slowly, and after this morning, we'll, we'll finish out the first chapter. So, I'd love for you to turn to James chapter 1, and uh, actually, I, I forgot, we're not finishing the first chapter today, that's next week, so, uh, anyway... But James chapter 1, we are, are going to be looking at really verses 13 down through the end of verse 17 today. And uh, just love for you to, to be there so that you can join with us as we talk about the Word and, and look at the Word um, this morning. I don't know if you've ever seen something in, in life um, that looks really complicated, um, but, you know, for some people, is it complicated? Uh, one of the, the things that, that I, I sort of falls into this category for me is my, my wife has uh, cro crochets uh, jackets and, and different coats and, and stuff like that. You might have seen some of the things that she's made. And, and time to time in the past, you know, I, I've just looked at it and I really am just amazed how uh, all the, the wool or all the wool or yarn comes together and, and just how all these, these things turn out so beautiful. And, and it, it just seems so complicated to me. And it's like, well, you know, how do you, you get the right length and, and how do you, you know, get the right spot for all this and, and, and make sure everything lines up and, and, and not to take anything away from her because it, it really is a, a gift and it, it is just a skill. But, but one of the things that, that helps, her, of course, and, and she said this to me before, is, is you just follow the pattern. You know, just follow the pattern. And, and, and so there are times when, when things that seem really complicated and really challenging and, and, and we, we just don't really uh, see how they all come together. Um, you know, if we can just sort of stop and, and observe and, and look at and, and follow the pattern, um, for, for most of us anyway, all of a sudden it, it just makes a lot of sense. And, and sometimes when you, you look at a pattern, what seems complicated, what seems difficult to figure out, uh, when you know the pattern of, of how it works, is, is actually, in many ways, um, very, very simple. Now, I think um, that that principle, that, that thought, works in, very, uh, in many different areas of our personal and in our, our spiritual lives as well. And, and you, you've seen people before, we've talked about in, in service before, people that, that go through life and, and they, they seem to get tripped up at, at the, the same points, at the same you know, spots, time and, and time again, and, and they just can't figure it out. And, and you know what, what's interesting is about those situations is that most of the time, that is not a mystery to anyone else. And, uh, and, and so life, in, in many ways, goes through different, different patterns. Uh, I, I don't know if I told you this story before, but years ago, um, we, we had this green, gray, oh no, it wasn't, that was a couple cars back. We, okay, back up. It was maroon, okay? Uh, a maroon, I think it was a, a Chrysler or something like that. That's not even important. Um, but but we, we, we had it, and, and I had one of those, uh, it had those old panels in it with the fuses, and, and vehicles still have that today. And, and so we would go through these things, and, and it was like always blowing fuses, and I just couldn't figure it out. And, and so, um, you know, one week I, I'd go in, and thankfully it wasn't that expensive, and, and get the new fuse and stick it in. And, and then like a, a month later, it, it would, um, you know, the same thing. So I'd go in and, and get the fuse replaced, and it's happened like four or five times. And, and then I, I had this great revelation one day, and, and this is the, the thought that came to me, Okay. Um, see if you follow along with this. My car should not be going through this many fuses this quickly. Something must be wrong. And so, after that great revelation, um, I sat down and I started to think through things. And, and what I started to notice as I sort of reflected and, and thought through it is, there's a pattern that's happening here. And after a little bit of detective work, what I found out is that every time I plug my iPhone and charger in, into the, the, the power station in my vehicle, it kept blowing a fuse. And so all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is really neat. Problem has been solved. And, and so what happened is I was just treating the symptoms time and time and time again. And in some ways it, it was like a cycle of frustration where I would just fix it and fix it and fix it. And, and then when I stopped, and what happened is I observed, 
a pattern that was happening. I observed the pattern that was happening time and time again. Then once the pattern was observed, I could correct, connect the pattern and then correct the pattern. So that it didn't happen time and time and time again. Factories run like this. Factories um, run on patterns. You know, if the goal of a factory is to produce something, most uh, factories anyway, is to produce something that is exactly the same off the assembly line every time. Exactly the same in quality, exactly the same in look. And, and so they have uh, processes, they, they have people, they have machines in place to ensure that every single time that television, that car, that whatever it is is being made, uh, that, that at the end of the, the process, at the end of the assembly line, looks exactly the same and is shipped off to somewhere to be sold. A couple things about patterns, and, and then we're going to jump into James, and I've already mentioned this one, so we'll just uh, talk about this really, really quickly. Um, you know, people see patterns in your life, and people see patterns in my life that we don't see. And, and that is so, so important because we need each other. And, and what is, a, as I said, what is a mystery to us most of the time is, is not always a mystery to everyone else. And, and so you're like, how do I keep ending up here? You know, how do I, I keep... Um, going through this time and time and time again, and, and everybody else could raise their hand and say, yeah, you know, it's because you keep doing this, it's because you keep saying this, it's because you keep putting your keys in the spot where they're not supposed to go, and, and, and that's why you, you can't find them when you need them, and, you know, you're sitting saying, such a mystery, I couldn't find my wallet, I couldn't find my keys, and, and everybody else is like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty evident why, is because you're not putting them where they're supposed to. Here's the second thing that I, I want you to, to know. Uh, about patterns um, th this morning, and, and that is um, that patterns that often seem random, patterns that seem random that don't seem to connect to, to uh, you know, don't seem to connect, don't seem to make sense, often make a lot more sense than we think they do. And I'll, I'll just give you an example to to fill this in. Um, I am a morning person, and a lot of you know that. I just love mornings. Most productive in, in mornings. And by the, the time you get me to like 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the evening, those are, are not my best hours. Okay, though, you know, this just starts to fade away at that point, all the makeup comes off and these things. <laughs> and, and those are, are not my, my best hours. And, and so, honestly, I, I get tired, you know, like I'm, I'm ready to crash for the night. And, uh, and, and so you put me in a, a meeting, and, and this is something i got to work on, but you put me in a meeting at 7, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, whatever the, the time is, but by that point in the day, I get irritated really, really quickly. Okay? And, and God forbid if you've ever experienced that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm just like, okay, like I'm tired. I want to be out of here. And, and, and so by, by that point in the day, um, you know, I, I'm just starting to fade away. Um, and, until the next morning, and, and you might be in a meeting with me uh, at that time and say, boy, you know, Brent, just, he was off tonight. You know, he didn't seem like himself. Uh, you know, it's kind of random. But, but what you wouldn't know, necessarily, is, is that it's not random at all. And in fact, if you knew me really well, you could predict, in, in many cases, my, my behavior, or predict that I'm just a little less patient at, at that time. And so what seems, or often seems random, often seems off to us, often seems like it's a mystery to us, is not really a mystery many times at all. And in fact, patterns tend to just connect themselves. Now, we'll see why we're talking about all this in the book of James this morning. would love for you to be in chapter 1 with us. And I want to just begin reading at verse 13. James chapter 1 in verse 13 begins like this. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. Let me just read that again. This is a really important verse. Let no one say when he is tempted by God, or sorry, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. So let me just tell you, right from that verse, verse 14 or verse 13, um, three things about temptation. When we face temptation in life, when we face temptation in our, our walk, number one thing that you need to know is it does not come from God. 
does not come from God. And, and so we, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about trials and, and, and things that we go through. And, and what we said, what we've noticed is, is God takes those things in our lives. God takes those hard times in our, our lives and he uses them to build our faith. He uses those things to move us towards maturity. But, but there's a, a distinction here. There's a distinction made between um, trials and, and difficult periods in life and, and temptations. In other words, God sometimes leads us into things that are hard. God sometimes uses things that are happening in our lives that are hard for His glory. But God does not tempt us. God does not bring temptation into our lives because He Himself cannot be tempted. Nor does He tempt the, the Christian. Now, that's one. The second thing that you should know from this verse is that, that when you are tempted, it's not someone else's fault. Okay, so it's not God's fault. It's not someone else's fault. And, you know, it's not your parents. It's not the environment that you grew up in. It's not your home life. And, and all those things we know factor into the, the, the kind of people that were, were shaped but, but what we're saying is that we cannot blame other people for our temptation. We, we cannot pass the buck, so to speak. So when temptation comes into our spiritual lives, it doesn't come from God. It doesn't come from others or, or it doesn't come from, from our home or from our computer or anything else. Those are, are just sort of symptoms. The third thing, and this one may be surprising, and, and I'm going to say it in this sort of... Um, Explain it just a little bit more. Third place temptation does not come from. You know where it doesn't come from? It doesn't come from Satan. And, and that may be surprising to you. And you're like, well, I thought Satan sort of started this whole thing. And, and he did. And, and what we're saying is, is that temptation does not come from Satan, uh, at least directly from Satan. And, and so there is a sense where, where Satan is the origin of, you know, sin originating with him. And, and because of the garden where we're all fallen people and, and all, all that stuff. So it, it indirectly, um, it, it all comes uh, around back to us. But, but when we are tempted, when we face temptation in our, our lives, we, we can't say, oh, Satan, Satan caused that. Satan brought that here. Satan put that on me. And, you know, kind of like the devil made me do it. I don't have a choice. The devil made me do it. James says that those three options are out the window. Now, this is what I want you to, to see here this morning, because this is really, really important for our, our study here. James tells us where it starts. James tells us where it starts. He says this. says, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own life. That's why we call the sermon this morning, Own This, because you know where temptation starts? You know where temptation begins? It begins in you. You and I are the problem, and we have to take responsibility that temptation starts in our own hearts. Because of our sin nature, because we are our fallen creatures, sin originates in our hearts. It begins here, and, and when you look through Scripture, um, that is why time and time and time again, uh, Proverbs and other verses, and Jesus talks about this, he, he says, um, no, guard your heart. Guard your heart, guard your heart, guard your heart, because out of your heart springs or comes forth the issues of life. In other words, the things that we deal with, the things you deal with, the things that I deal with, um, they, they begin inside of us. And eventually, you know, we can keep them bottled up for a while and, and you know, kind of keep those dark secrets hidden for a while. But, but eventually, um, they, they begin to manifest themselves and, and they, they spring out into our, our everyday lives. And so James says that the, the beginning point, the starting point of temptation begins in, in your heart, begins in, in my heart. says each one is tempted when he is carried away or, or drawn away. Uh, I think in some translations it says dragged away. Uh, it says and enticed by his own lust. And in that word lust is a very general word. This simply means this, uh, sinful craving. Temptation begins when we are drawn away by our own sinful cravings. Your sinful cravings, my sinful cravings. The, the image um, that is, is used here is, is the image of, of fishing. The, the word in, in the, the Bible that's used back in the Greek, it, it's very connected with fishing. 
And, and the, the idea is, is this, and um, how many people love to fish? Put up your hand if you're a fisher, fisher person. Okay, a few, a few of you. Okay, the image is, is this. Um, you are a fisherman, and, and you are in a boat, and, and you, you get your, your fishing rod, and at the end of the fishing rod, you attach, um, you know, some bait. You, you attach a, a lure, something that's supposed to uh, attract the fish. And, and what happens is as your, your bait or as your lure is, is in the water, uh, here comes this, this fish and he's just swimming along and it, it's um, just a great day for him. And, and he sees the bait. He sees the lure. I mean, this is how fishing works. Uh, and, and he doesn't see the, the hook because the, the lure or the bait is, is disguising or, or hiding the, the hook. And he can't see the fisherman because the fisherman is above the water in the boat. And, and so he sees something that is enticing. He sees something that he wants. He sees something that he thinks is, is food. And, and so he, he goes and, and he, he takes a hold of it. He swallows it. And then what happens to the fish? He is caught. Now, fish can't really think like this. Um, but if they could reason like this, a fish that was smart might say something like this. I've been caught a few times before, before, and I was too small, so the fisherman threw me back in. I bit and gotten hooked on this lure before, this exact lure, time and, and time and time again. And, and the fish might say something like this, if, if they could think like this. I'm starting to see a pattern and so if I was a smart fish, even though it's enticing, even though it's tempting, even though it looks so good, but if I was a smart fish, because I've seen this happen time and time again and experienced this time and time again, what I might do this time is, is swim away before one of these times I get caught and the fisherman says, you know what, I'm not going to throw this fish back in. And, and the interesting thing about sin, and, and when it comes to you, when it comes to me, is that we can choose whether we, we grab a hold of it, we can choose whether we take the bait, we can choose whether we uh, allow our sinful cravings to, to take over, and, and to, whether we get hooked. But once we are hooked, we have no say, no choice, no control over the consequences that come after that. Once we are hooked, once we have been caught, we, we have no control over what happens next. And we are at, in, in our illustration anyway, we are at the mercy of the fisher. And so James says something about sin. And he says, this is what I want you to see about sin. When it comes to sin, there is a pattern that happens time and time and time again. And so the, the circumstances might be different. The place might be different. Even the, the situation might be different. But the pattern is the same over and over and over and over again. And that is, it starts when our, our sinful cravings, when our, our sinful lusts, when we, we are lured into taking the bait, and then we are hooked. And again, circumstances might change, places might change, people might change, um, you know, all the, the sort of the toppings might change, but time and time and time again, the main dish is, happens exactly the same way. Enticed inside of us, enticed by our sinful cravings, take the bait, and then we are hooked. Now, this is kind of rough, and, and I, I hate to do this to you, um, but we're switching from fishing illustration to birth illustration. Kind of rough, I know. But I want you to notice what James says ne next. He says, we're enticed by our own lust. Then he says this, when lust has conceived, so there's a switch in illustration. When lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. When lust is conceived, when we give in to our sinful cravings, it starts within our own hearts. That we, we you know, when we can give into those, lust is, is conceived. It gives birth to, to what? I want you to say that word. What is the next word? Sin. Our, our lust conceived gives birth to sin. See the pattern? It starts with your sinful cravings. It starts with my sinful cravings. We take the bait. We take the lark. And, and when that happens, uh, we, we, we move 
towards sin time and time and time again. And James is saying, look, this is a sin pattern. And the sin pattern is the same for you. The sin might be different, but the pattern is the same for you. And it's the same for me. And, and then this is really hard and really harsh and really scary. But notice what James says next. When it says, when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. When sin is accomplished, it brings forth what? See, it's like the assembly line. It starts with our sinful craving, and it leads to one thing, and one thing only. It leads to death. Sobering, isn't it? It's like that fish. And he, he ought to know better, but it's so tempting. And he takes a hold of it, and it leads to one place and one place over. Uh, one place only. And that is death. In other words, lust conceives and has a baby, and the baby's name is death. Now, death, in many, many ways, in many, many situations, that is death of potentially a marriage. That is, is death, and in, in the ultimate sense, we, we know it, it's physical death. We, we know where, where sin takes us. You, you think back to the, the Garden of Eden, the sin uh, had many practical consequences for them, but, but essentially the consequence, the, the biggest consequence was death, was, was brought into the world. And, and so when we take the bait, when we take the, the hook, it, it leads uh, to, to death. Death in our, our marriages, death in our relationships, death in our churches, death in, in pretty much any way, shape, or that, that we can imagine. In other words, sin, and this isn't like a, a ground shaking for you folks, but in other words, sin takes us absolutely nowhere good ever. It never leads us towards life. It never leads us towards growth. It never leads us to, to a place where we can uh, mature in our faith. It never leads to a, you know, growth in our relationships or, or anything like that. It never leads to growth in our churches. It's the pattern that starts with our own lusts, our own sinful cravings, and it leads to one place every single time, Gene says, that place is death. Sobering, isn't it? And it's tempting sometimes, like the fish, to think that, well, you know, I, I seem to get away with it this time. I, I took the bait. I got caught, but, you know, I was thrown back in the water or something like that. But even then, it leads to death, and eventually the fish will be trapped. And they have no place to go. Sin, when it is fully accomplished, sin when it's re reached its peak, sin when it, it, it makes its full circle, leads to death. James says this, and we're just going to finish out um, verse 16 and verse 17. He says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from, a, from above, coming down from the Father of lights, lights, with whom there is no variations or no changing of shifting shadows. This is where I want to finish um, today. What is your sin pattern? And in a general way, we've just spoken about it. It starts with our own lust, and it, it ends in death. For you, it ends in death. For me, it ends in death. For everyone, it takes us nowhere good any time, any, at any point. But see, the thing is that, that we could probably take some time and, and look at our own lives and, and sort of sift through that a, a little bit more. And, and if we, we took some time to reflect on this, we, we could probably say to ourselves, this is the bait that I keep getting caught on. This is the lure that, that keeps drawing me in. This is the, the place uh, where, where I keep getting stuck on. And, and as we said, you know, it, it may be uh, complicated and, and, you know, a mystery to us about why we, we keep stumbling here. It probably is not a mystery to those that are closest to us and, and they may be able to help us. It, it may be that every time 
I get in a conversation with that person, it leads to nowhere good. Or every time I enter into a meeting with this kind of attitude, conflict seems to come up, and, and it is just problem after problem after problem. And, and that is to say that, that all of us in, in our lives, in your life, and in my life, we have patterns that if we took some time to stop and think through them, they would probably help us realize and, and help us see where we need to be extremely careful when it comes to our own sinful cravings and to our own sin. And, and maybe for you, you need to stop back and say, okay, I, I really need to limit the amount of time I'm spending with that person because they just seem to keep drawing me into these places and these habits and these attitudes. Or maybe for you, it's, it's like, I, I really need to, to limit the amount of time I'm, I'm spending on my computer, on my phone, because every time I'm there, I, I seem to get caught in these patterns over and over and over again that are, are not good for my spiritual life or for my marriage or for my family. And, and they, they just, I mean, I, I know it. They, they lead me towards death, but I just keep getting caught time and time and time and time What is it that Satan is using to lure you in? And eventually, you take the bait and you're caught. And I want to say these, these three things as we close this morning that I hope are, are helpful to you. Here's the first thing that, that we can do when we find ourselves these patterns. The thing about patterns is first we need to observe I mean, patterns can be really helpful to us, but if we don't understand them, if we don't observe them, they're, they're pretty much useless. And, and so if we can observe and, and start to connect some of the, the dots and, and some of the things that are happening in our lives, just like I, I did eventually with my, my car and, and why I kept blowing the fuse, if we can observe and, and connect, then we can take a really important step with the help of, of, of God, of course, and that is we can begin the process of correcting. We can begin the process of correcting and, and head in a, a different direction. And so, so here's a, a couple things that, that I want to just encourage you with this morning. First of all, pray. Pray and pray a lot. And, and ask the Lord to give you a sense. Ask the, the Lord to, to open in, in your heart. Ask the, the Lord to direct you to, to being able to clearly see the, the traps that, that Satan keeps setting, keeps placing, the, the lures that, that he keeps throwing in, in your life. And, and I, I need to pray that, that I will see clearly the ones that, that he keeps throwing in my life. Because the, the more aware we are of, of these things, and the more the Holy Spirit uh, opens our eyes to these things, the, the better equipped we are to, to be able to avoid them. And so we pray. We pray for wisdom. We, we pray that God will open our eyes. We pray that, that God will help us. Another thing that, that we can do and, and need to do is, is to be accountable to one another. And as we talked about this before, you, you need to, to find your, your husband, your, your wife, a really, really close friend. And, and it might be helpful for you to have a conversation with them and say, you know what? Are there patterns? Are there things happening, uh, sinful things happening in my life that you've just observed time and, and time again? And, and, and what, if there are, if you've noticed things, what I would like to do is to give you permission to, to speak into those areas of, of my life. And, and, you know, we've talked about this um, at different points before. It's really challenging for, for someone else. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of guts, and, and sometimes we need to do this, to go to someone and, and say, uh, you know, I, I've been noticing some things and I'm, I'm concerned about some things. You know what? You know what's a lot easier? Is if, if you come to, to someone that you're close with and say, I give you permission to speak into my life in, in this way. That, that just opens the door for honesty and, and accountability. Folks, sin leads us to one place and one place only. And it's death. And it's not good. It's not good for our relationships, and it's not good for our faith, and eventually it, it takes anything that is of value, anything that is of worth, anything that has any sort of life, 
in, into us, uh, in, in us and it just takes it and it absolutely destroys it. And so how is Satan using different things in your life to lure you into that same pattern time and time again? And what steps can you take, what steps can I take to begin to avoid those lures over and over? Let's pray together this morning. Father, we rarely talk uh, about sin, it seems, anymore. And we know it's there, and, and we, we know that we struggle with it. Yet it, it seems hard for us to address it at times. Lord, we, we thank you for James. We thank you for his reminder that it, it starts in our own hearts. It, it starts with our, our sinful cravings. And that we need to be feeding ourselves and, and focusing ourselves on things that are as Philippians as pure and right and good. Lord, that we realize that as your children, we are, are not slaves to these things. But we can be conquerors over those cravings through the Son of God that died for us. Lord, would you just make us ultra, ultra aware of sometimes those sneaky, sometimes those quiet traps that Satan sets for us over and over and over. And for whatever reason, we're just not aware or we don't care. But Lord, for the sake of our churches and the sake of our relationship with you and the sake of our families, Lord, would you help us to become conquerors over these things. Lord, we do ask them in your name today.